Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Film and Cerebloc Studios, and welcome back to an all new four part series on the elements of design. Today we're going to be talking about line. So when we first start thinking about line, we want to start thinking about its general characteristics. First is the width of the line. How thick, how thin it is. Is it uneven? Is it tapered? Second is the length. Continuous, broken, long, short. Third is the direction. Is it horizontal, diagonal, vertical, everywhere in between? Fourth is that line in focus, or is it sort of blurred and too close to or too far away? And fifth, what is the feeling that line portrays? Is it sharp? Is it smooth, like jaggedy and crazy? Or is it more flowing and easy? Next up, we want to talk about different types of lines. An outline or silhouette will build the general shape of an object. Contour lines are made by one continuous line where you never actually pick up the pencil. This can be a great way to practice, especially both contour lines that you're seeing and closing your eyes and doing blind contour line drawings. There's also gestures, which are used most of the time in figure drawings to capture the overall form, but not necessarily worrying too much about details. There's sketch style lines, which are usually a little bit shorter in length and are used to capture the overall and general scene and not, again, worrying too much about detail. Then there are implied lines, which aren't really drawn there, but they exist because of two objects coming together and creating a line in the center. Now that we've talked about characteristics and types, let's think about what kind of function each individual line has. Lines can be used to organize elements in a piece, both to unify and to separate. Depending on the type and characteristics of the line, it can be used to create texture, as well as guiding the eye and creating movement in a piece. In addition to movement, lines can also convey symbolism in paintings, drawings, and other forms of art. Now that we've covered our basics, let's dive into perspective. Perspective is characterized by two main features. A horizon line and a vanishing point, both are vital in creating depth. The easiest and most common way to understand perspective is by creating blocks which often become city buildings. The most basic form of perspective is called single point. In single point perspective, one set of lines will be leading directly to the vanishing point, and the other two sets of lines will be parallel to the horizon and remain vertical. Two point perspective adds an additional vanishing point to make a more believable depth. Two point, for this reason, is one of the most commonly used perspective choices for artists. Another common choice is three-point perspective, which mimics a true 3D space by essentially creating an X, a Y, and a Z axis. Four, five, and six-point perspective can be a little bit complicated to implement, but can create a more spherical environment. These types of perspective create a larger world, so to speak, but as you can see, it may be a little bit difficult to execute and project. For this reason, most people won't explore beyond three-point perspective, and the additional extremes aren't usually necessary to convey the same meaning. In addition to multi-point perspective, we also need to talk about radial single-point perspective, as well as for shortening. Radial perspective, as I call it, uses circles to explore a range within a single vanishing point. This technique can be seen in my painting process video, The Crater. For shortening, it's similar to radial perspective in that it uses circles and ellipses to create depth. Foreshortening can be best understood by closing one eye and looking straight at a coin. Straight on it appears as a circle, but as you turn it, it becomes more of an oval and eventually just a straight line. Understanding foreshortening will also allow you to build depth with characters and figures as they were in a 3D space. In many ways, radial perspective and foreshortening go hand in hand. Now we've covered quite a lot of stuff here today, so let's take a quick review. Lines are first known by their characteristics. We can then understand more about the piece by looking at the type of line we're seeing. The function of each line will tell you exactly what's happening in the scene. And then perspective can be used to build depth. And whether you're looking at geometric shapes or something more fluid, perspective and foreshortening really go hand in hand. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. Be sure to keep an eye out for part two on the series, where I focus on shape and form. And for more art videos, subscribe to the channel. This has been from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. See you guys next time.